what's up guys you're welcome once again to david data channel on today's video we're going to be continuing on our dbt series and today's video we're going to be taking one step back um i know we've talked about how to set up your project on dbt core talked about models seed snapshots but right now we're going to take a step back and try to understand the file called the dbt underscore project dot yaml file this file is the file that actually tells dbt that you are working on a dbt project we're going to go through the documentations to try to understand the intricacies and configurations available in this file so that even as you set up your project you can be able to um configure it in a way that suits you and suits your connection or your project in whatever use case all right so right now we're going to jump immediately into the dbt documentation if this is your first time on the channel, please do hit the like button and the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can be notified once a new video drop in. On this channel, we share tips around data, science and analytics and around productivity and also around faith. Alright, so let us jump into the documentation of DBT Docs right now. And also do well to check the link below and the link above for the links to the other videos on DBT so you can catch up on where we are right now all right okay so the dbt underscore project dot yaml file every dbt project needs this file this is how dbt knows that a directory is a dbt project so in this dbt underscore len directory if i take out this file from this directory dbt wouldn't know that this directory is a dbt project right this is, it is this file that allows dbt to know that this folder this directory is a dbt project right and um, it contains important information and configuration on how to operate so that tells dbt how to operate on your project and it uses the yaml language right and which is something we we'll look about we'll talk about in future videos all right so let's look at the um variables and how they are being configured in this dbt underscore project your yaml files and the yaml files basically are, are helpful for configuration settings so the first guy we have is name name is a string which is simply your name of your dbt project which usually should be your organization name or any name that feels comfortable with you and then secondly we have config version and usually it is set at 2 by default because version 1 has been deprecated at the time of this recording it is set at default 2 we don't know in the future you may have a version 3 for config version but as of now it is 2 version refers to the version of your dbt project there are several versions of dbt project there's version 0.2 up to version 1 and version 1.2 1.1 1 1.3 so you specify the version of your dbt project and here i specified version 1.0.0 and then we have, we have profile profile refers to your profile name now remember when we we're setting up dbt core and we're putting in some configuration on uh the command line prompt where we added the path of our json key from bigquery and we added some other information about and the name of our project profile and stuff like that and that information was securely saved in a file called your profiles.yaml file. Now you're going to find that profile.yaml file um, in your .dbt directory, right? Your .dbt directory. You find it in there. And if you open up that file, you'll see something like this. So this is what we used. And um, so for us, we have a dbt learn, the output in the development environment. When dbt run, run it into the data set. Um, this is the key file for the JSON key that was created location method using the service account method now we did all this on the command line when we we're setting up dbt core for the first time you can refer to the first video and uh, it created this file now this this item here dbt learn these profiles must be the same thing with this information here for dbt to run if this is not the same it should not run so let me just do something let me see i take off the end so let's do dbt debug and see if it's going to connect you see one check field could not find profile called dbt learn so i'll just correct that and save and do dbt debug so really that's what profile so your profile name has to be the same name as your profiles name your profiles or tml file and then we have several parts we have the model parts seed parts test parts analysis parts macro parts snapshot parts docs parts and assets parts now all these are directory parts right so basically you're telling dbt where should the parts in your directory where they should find models 
where the beetle should find your seeds. Now, typically, seeds and models shouldn't be in the same directory because your models are .sql files and your seeds are typically .csv files, right? Your test is .dot um, dot sql files as well so if you notice on this uh in our in our in our directory in our dbt directory we have the models directory that's why i have this saying that hey dbt you can find any models in the model directory you can find any analysis in the analysis directory which is what you have up here you can find test in the test directory you can find everything seed in the seeds directory you could find macros in everything called in the macros directory and if you had a custom directory within the macros part for example you can ha have a comma there and add your custom your custom part yeah so really that's how that works we also have the snapshot part which really is your directory for where dbt can find your snapshots I and mean, then we also have your docs part which is where dbt will find your docs block uh, typically dbt will find your docs your docs block which is a form of documentation Aside from our normal documentation in your model seeds and test, uh, DBT by default would want to go with finding it in these other places like models, seeds, and macros and other points like that. And then we also have our assets parts. Um, I just clicked through this first. So optionally specify a custom list of directory to copy to the target directory as part of the docs generate command so by default dbt will not compile any additional files as part of docs generate right so basically uh any files including this directory will be copied to the target directory as part of dbt doc generate makes it, making them accessible as images in your project documentation so you have um assets images things you want to add to your dbt documentation um dbt will pick it up from these assets uh, directory and then we have your target parts which is this where you find um, your compiled sql after you've run dbt um where dbt dbt run um model after run is made compiled and run right your graph um pickle and your manifest json for documentation and other stuff like that in the target um directory you find your log directory where dbt keeps in logs of every thing that has been done right log of everything done and all that right you also have your packages install part, which is also a directory part where dbt finds um packages that you have installed in your dbt project i don't know if i have um that here already do i have anything for packages i don't think so so um typically you have this uh, dbt packages when you install dbt packages you just verify the path but by default dbt will check for it in this dbt underscore packages and then you have your clean targets directory so when you run dbt clean you specify the directories for dbt to clean on my dbt project if i do dbt clean it tells dbt to clean targets clean dbt packages and also clean the logs off yeah we have the query comments used to create a comment on each of your queries in your data warehouse All right you can read it more we also have required dbt version where you specify the kind of version specific for your project now this is important if you have packages that are dependent on certain versions of dbt so you may want to give a dbt a version range say um from okay for example here i have greater than version 1.0.0 right that's the big thing i should put greater than equal to this but then we have, we have our models model config seed configs snapshots configs sources config test configs now all these are configuration just as you find your model configs you're telling um, dbt how to configure these models um how would these models or seeds or snapshots be um would it be materialized as tables or as views or ephemeral or incremental how would dbt do these things now you could um do this model configurations from this dbt underscore project yaml files or you can do it as a through the config block and there's one other method to get this done um let me go through the docs to see this um yeah property file yeah you can create a yaml file for this in your model let's say models.yaml file and specify the configuration for that model you can do it through config block and also through the project file which is dbt underscore um project.yaml files right and then we have um variables vars dbt provides a mechanism variables to provide data to models for compilation variables can be used to configure time zones avoid hard coding table names 
or otherwise provide data to models to configure how they are compiled right so you have um, some variables you want to use in your um, project dvt allows you to set them under these variables say for example you are doing a google analytics um, you're modeling data from google analytics you want to just create a variable name that will identify um, because Google Analytics data is usually um, shared, shared data. You want to create a variable that will specify the start date and the end date. So those things that we have here in this, in this um, example format. Yeah. So basically, this is how this really an overview of the dbt underscore project YAML file, right? I hope you get a thing or two out of this. Don't forget to subscribe as you continue our dbt projects.